hands and doing something special to it. That's what this video is about. Off-grid proctology. <laughs> oh no. The Roman arch form is about to get filled with a glass bottle window. I'm crazy excited. I feel like that's what this house is becoming. Something beautiful out of mud. That bird's impressed. Oh my goodness, this looks beautiful. So the design work begins, huh? Yeah. You're really, you've really been hustling today. Well, yeah, it's a little late in the day for this, but I think I could knock it out today. Well, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, you asked why a crew might be okay with you out here and not me. Maybe it's because you're way over here where he can't see you. He knows I'm here. He's a daddy's boy. <laughs> <laughs> crew, what's going on? I'm an angry boy. I'm an angry boy. Crew, what's going on? <laughs> oh. oh no! You sure he's the daddy's boy? <laughs> I was expecting you to go uh, toward the east. I don't know where we're going. Going for a moonlight stroll? Yeah, look, it's a full moon. Yeah. Crew, give us a howl. <laughs> no howling for this guy. Mm -hmm. Gonna get this glass clean Molina. Huh? Yep. And it's important that this one is particularly clean. Yeah, why is that? Because I'm doing something special to it. So I'm gonna wipe off all the, the dirt and dust, and then I'll probably wipe it off with some rubbing alcohol. Oh, you gonna got a whole process you're gonna do, huh? Yeah. This is contact paper. And I'm making a stencil. Crew says he wants to help. Crew. Crew. <laughs> Never mind, he's out. <laughs> On the recommendation of one of our neighbors, Bill, says to me to get one of these special glass blades. Says it will give us a much nicer, cleaner cut. Yeah. I'll pick that up later. Or I won't. Why oh, better? <sighs> uh, just gotta get this glue off, yo. Come on. Glue. Why do I gotta be so stupid? Alright, Bill, we're about to put this blade to the test. Let's see if it's worth it. <laughs> now, this saw is called a tile saw. Yes. This is a wet tile saw, to be specific. Yes, we can cut glass with it, but uh, we can also cut tile, uh, masonry, so it's not just for glass. Uh, we can use it for other things as well. But this blade is specifically for glass? This blade will be specifically for glass. I know you can get a, a kind of a simple, cheap tool for cutting glass. The process seems like a little bit lengthy with like having to heat up the bottle and getting just the right cut. So I opted to go with this just to uh, kind of speed up the process a little bit. 
because we're going to have a lot of glass to cut, I think. What's that? You know, it's, it's kind of funny because I specifically, when I picked this tool up, I specifically asked about glass cutting. The person that sold me this said that this blade would be fine, but didn't tell me that they made specific blades for glass. That bird is watching us. It's like, what these people do? Wait, where is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I imagine we're rather uncomfortably close for it. Just trying to decide whether it needs to take off or not. Like, do I need to take off? Are these fools going to be a problem? Can be quick? Yep. Not too bad. Oh, are they getting up more nervous? Probably right under it. Maybe I'm projecting a sense of calm that is putting the bird at ease. Does it look at ease? It looks suspicious. Now it just wants nine inch bricks. So we are going to put this at four and a half inches, which is almost pretty much the limit. You ready to rock and roll with some glass cutting? Mm -hmm. Show me where them bottles are and I will commence to cut. Daddy bird. Oh, maybe. Now, last time I don't think I was able to get some good cutting footage, but Jess is out with me here today. She's gonna give you a first-hand look of kind of how this process looks. See anymore. Okay. Whoa, look at that cut. That is a beautiful cut. Uh oh, I guess Bill knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, experience. Thanks, Bill. That bird's impressed. You're really happy with how those edges turned out, right? They're very nice edges. There's definitely a difference between cutting with that previous blade and cutting with the glass blade. And I just noticed that it's a little more difficult to cut with the glass blade, but I'm sure that's part of why it keeps the cut a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, it just takes a little bit more time to eat through that glass. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to force it through, right? I don't think you want to force it through. You just kind of let it do its thing. Especially in the thinner glass. <laughs> These bottles are a little dirty, but this is working out real nice. I love these cuts. So all the bottles are cut. Thanks to your awesome husband. And uh, what's up now? Proctology exam? <laughs> oh, no. That's what this video is about. Off-grid proctology. <laughs> so I am going to let you clean all these bottles and I will just, uh, I'll just work the camera here. Mm, we got a tripod right there. I'm resting my arm on that currently. <laughs> all right, all right, let me help out. Hey, when we uh, double teamed this last time, we got it done pretty quick, didn't we? Yeah. 
Are you impressed with how uh, how the clean cut on those bottles? Yeah, looks really nice. Not that it matters how it looks. Yeah, it'll be taped up and everything, but maybe it'll provide a little better seal. We have a man down. Broken bottle. Jess doesn't know her own strength. He just smashed that bottle. Take it easy. Yeah, I know. At least you're not breaking them over my head. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Jess is doing the tough job. She's doing the tough work. Look at that. She's scraping all that gunk out of the bottom of these bottles. Is this the toughest, worst part of the job? Yeah, probably. She's like, quit your talking, get back to scrubbing. You either get busy scrubbing or you get busy dying. <laughs> Gotta inspect everything you bring in. You must wait until the inspection is done. You done? So it is getting late in the day and we are still at it. Kind of taking special care to dry out each of these bottles. And uh, what are you doing here? I'm gonna try applying this glue. What do you got there? What kind of glue is that? It's called E6000. I'm hoping to give it a good seal. So I'll probably put this on and then some tape over that. Good morning. Good morning. So you are up and at it already. Now what uh now what's the next step? I'm going to tape the bottle bricks. Looks like you got your taping technique down. Then you're kinda going over it now. Trying to get out any pockets, air bubbles. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's one nice thing about the clear tape. Like it's a little easier to see if it's, you know, down really good. Maybe he's not feeling too well today. You think? I don't know. He hasn't licked that plate yet. He hasn't freaked out yet. Yeah, he, see? Something must be seriously wrong. Should we get should we get him to the vet? Maybe uh maybe it's the little bit of rain. Crew doesn't care for the rain. Crew, you don't care for that rain, do you? Got a plate. One like that plate. What are you doing here exactly? I'm making a stencil out of this contact paper. Have you ever done anything like this before? No. I love the ambition. I was going for kind of a lotus blossom design and then I just started drawing and uh, this is what it turned into. Interesting. Why the lotus blossom in particular? I kind of like the symbolism of the lotus blossom. So it's supposed to be like this beautiful flower that comes out of the murky depths below, kind of out of the mud. Mm. I feel like that's what this house is becoming. Yeah. Something beautiful out of mud. Although this, to me, this looks more like fire like fireballs shooting out. Nah. Well, that's, they're both beautiful. 
lotus blossoms or fireballs. So you finally finished cutting. Uh, yeah. What's next? I massage my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> peel off what I cut. So you're peeling off all the interior design. Oh, this is looking cool already. I feel like some of these inside ones could be tricky. Yeah. So to be careful. What's this product? You were, this was uh, difficult to get. Yeah, it's a glass etching cream. So I'm going to apply it onto the glass. I have to get some protection on because this stuff is, it might be caustic. It can cause severe burns. So I'm going to wear gloves and... A mask? Should I? Maybe. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in either. Okay. This looks beautiful. I don't know if any of you have wondered what we do with our garbage out here, but let me show you real quick. Any kind of organic waste that we have, anything that's biodegradable, gets composted. Either in a compost tumbler or in big compost piles. Glass bottles and jars we usually save and recycle or reuse. We can use them in our, some of our building projects or just for storage containers sometimes. Plastic garbage is a little more tricky. We don't really have a good recycling program in our area and some stores do take back like plastic bags and things, but really when you buy things from most stores, a lot of the products come wrapped in plastic and we hope to be reducing this kind of waste when we start producing a lot of our own food. But right now, we're still at the point where we have to do a lot of our shopping in town. So we do get some plastic waste. So what I started doing is taking a lot of this plastic, especially things like bags and wrappers, a lot of packaging, and I stuff them into plastic bottles. Uh, we're planning on getting a bunch of these and using it in a build so that we can make use of this plastic and not have to throw it away so it doesn't go into a landfill or wherever it goes. And we get material for building out here for things that we need to build. When these bottles are filled, they make these solid bricks that can be embedded in cement or cob, and you can build walls with them. What are you doing? You do that? You do that? 
All right, so we got our bottle bricks made. Uh, Jessica got the etching done. Now's my time to shine. Time to mix up some cob so that we can get ready with this window. The Roman arch form is about to get filled with a glass bottle window. I'm crazy excited. Luckily, I have a bunch of dirt all ready to go. It's all been sifted out of some of the larger rocks. So uh, this shouldn't take too long, but a few minutes to get some mix made, then we'll be able to begin. You can really tell the difference between uh, the sifted dirt and non-sifted dirt and the way it mixes up inside there. See, maybe this is why he's acting out. You're constantly taunting him with meat sticks. Mama said you don't deserve a meat stick. Naughty dogs don't get no treats. <laughs> he's like, look, I'm a good boy. I'm sitting now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring you some cob. Now that's how you clean a glove. See, now after all the terrifying parts, now it's the fun part. <laughs> Playing with the mud. Order up. So what would you like, ma'am? A mud. I feel like you might be having too much fun. Now you're opting to leave that board in place. Is there a particular reason why? Because it's gonna be difficult to take it out. <laughs> See Jess, it's drizzling. I had a feeling I might start raining again. Please come to visit you. Look, he's like, okay, now where's my <laughs> lunch? Oh, look at that. You're convincing. You're breaking mama's heart. Um, I'm so hungry. But look at that. He's waiting patiently, though. Super. Either that or he's breathing down your neck. <laughs> waiting for the food. Unbelievable. Yeah, the rain was coming down pretty good uh, a little while ago. Yeah, it looks like it stopped, looks like it's clearing up, but uh, we got a nice little bit of rain. I'm gonna stomp around here in my mud boots. See what we got, see what we got. <laughs> so we got a, uh, in that uh, quick downpour, we actually got a decent amount of rain. 0.2 inches. I'll take it. I'll take it. Our poly tanks are overflowing again. We're getting more water on those IBC totes. And we didn't even have to stop working. <laughs> Did you catch that, Jess? 0.2 inches. 0.2, wow. Now, my question is how are you doing the top? How do you do the top over the window? I'm intrigued to see how you do this, if it works out. It's kind of a little bit of a gamble. Yep. We'll see if we need to add maybe some wood supports or anything like that, but I think it might work out well, because it'll have cob support. Cob support. <laughs> Well, Jess is actually keeping me pretty busy today. Uh, it's actually taken quite a few mixes of cob for this. All right, I got you covered. More cob coming up. So how is it getting cob along the uh, upper ridge of the arch? It's not too hard. I think that's looking pretty firm. Yeah, I think uh, so I put a couple more on the other side, that should be good. Yeah, I think that was a good idea. Uh, once for the camera, whose idea was that? <laughs> it's Jim's idea. <laughs> hey, I get them every now and then. Ah, so you're doing one in the middle too. I like that. This looks like tricky work.
Now I know uh, we had a discussion about using that glass in there. The window's kind of facing southwest, so I wasn't sure if we wanted just a big pane of glass in there. Generally speaking, you don't want windows on your west side, especially if you're trying to mitigate the heat and everything like this. This particular window is kind of southwest. It's got a nice overhang now, plus it'll have eaves over it. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty well shaded from any kind of direct light for the most part. And that's one reason why I set it back towards the, the inside of the dome, so it would have uh, more of that shade. But we did want to just be able to kind of peek out in this direction. We want to see who's coming, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want people sneaking up on us. I think it was a good compromise there. I'm loving the rounded edge you're doing here. That'll go to support the, uh, the top too. So, I thought you were going square. I have a better idea of how to work with Cobb in like a sculptural way now, I think. These past two windows have really sort of been a departure from how we've normally been cobbing. And it's been a lot more care, a lot more sculptural, right? Yeah, well, this one definitely. Ooh. Crew! <laughs> He's not happy. He ain't happy. Crew said, I want to hang out in the den on the dirty, dirty floor. Well, I guess it's the dirt ground or the dirt floor. Good morning, y'all. Well, it's the next day. You know, we had sprinkles on and off, but we really didn't get too much more to uh, increase the amount of rain in the rain gauge. So about 0.2 inches. So that's not bad. We'll take it. You know, poly tanks are full again, so you can't complain about that. More water in the IBC totes. But meanwhile, we are almost done here with the Roman arch window. I'm crazy excited. So I did some prep work. I'm getting everything ready. So when Jess is ready to come out here, everything's ready to go for her. And uh, we'll get this finished up. Uh, still a little chilly, but uh, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. She made it out here. She is ready to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> almost ready to get it done. Uh, so how are you feeling going into this? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? I think it's almost done, but this last part is the tricky part. Yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. Because it's tough getting that cob right up at the top of the bag, right? Yeah, and for some reason I, I designed it in such a way that <laughs> <laughs> some bottles are going to be hanging out over open air. So hopefully that, that wire shelf holds up and maybe the kind of the way things are designed will help support that but we'll find out we're gonna find out here in a little bit so i know you said the inspiration for the etching was like the lotus blossom with fireballs spitting out right uh <laughs> i guess something like that <laughs> how do you feel like this whole thing fits together is there a theme that connects the window to what you've done on the outside or do you feel like what you've done here on the outside is kind of like a, an extension, a bit of what you've done on the inside? Right, and vice versa. I wanted the circle shapes of the bottles to kind of be mimicked in the pane of glass. You know, it was a rectangular piece of glass, but I wanted that same curve of the window opening, so I just cobbed around it to make that form. All right, Jess is thinking she's going to need some more cob, so I got another mix done for her. And uh, I'm actually kind of just leaving it facing the sun a little bit. Uh, it's a little on the wet side. So I figure just kind of let the sun get at it a little bit, let it uh, stiffen up a bit, and uh, hopefully it's the perfect consistency when Jess needs it. Looks like you just about got the first bottle uh, situated. Looks so far so good that... uh the part that's hanging over the window. Yeah, it's holding up pretty well. Nice, nice. And that uh, 
That glass pane is in there pretty solid now. Oh yeah, I don't I don't doubt that. <laughs> that looks solid. Oh, looks like it's really coming along, Jess. Almost done with bottle number two. So question, uh, are you kind of learning anything about having to put cob on an almost upside down surface? Um, yeah, I'm actually surprised at how easy it is. Well, like you can't just slap it on there. I'm kind of building it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, then my technique is done. That's all I do is I slap it on. Oh, yeah, that might not work. I was uh, remarking to her uh, sort of like the multiple levels of the window. You got this outside edge and then there's this inside of cob and bottles. And then even further in, uh, you have the glass plate. And mm -hmm. it uh, really has a pretty unique effect. Yeah, I kind of like it. So, I mean, it's like two-dimensional design with the three-dimensional design. I was also remarking, like, it's, it was, it's literally like a work of art, and you can really see the texture of the knife as, you know, she lays, she's layering on this cob, so it's incredibly beautiful. Uh-oh, final bottle's going in. Ah! Jess, you excited? Uh-oh, someone's adding rocks to the window. Uh, was this uh, an original intent or a sudden inspiration? No, I was planning on it. How are you? Very cool. Yeah, it was nice to be able to kind of get out of that rain and still be able to work on it, right? Yeah, I could work from the inside. And we got 0.2 inches. You know, the poly tanks are full again. It's very exciting. Going into uh, almost the end of January and our poly tanks are full. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, if we keep using some, you know, hopefully we still get maybe some rain next month or something like that. And then before it goes into that dry spell, there's like four months of hot, dry weather, right? Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to, I think we'll be able to make it to uh, the next monsoon season. Yeah, I think we could. Yeah, for sure. Um, one nice thing about the kind of clouds and moisture is oh. the cob doesn't dry super fast. I figured you were so going to say that, yeah. <laughs> maybe it, there won't be as much cracking, but the flip side of that is uh, I might have to work slower on here because a, a chunk did fall off of the top that was hanging down. Um, so I, I'm going to have to wait uh, till things firm up a little bit to add some more on. Did you just call me a moron? <laughs> Man, what an amazing job. I am beside myself having seen this creation firsthand. Literally, this lady hand sculpted this window out of glass, glass bottles, mud, and straw. Uh, how many times have we ended videos right in this spot. I think quite a few and uh, now it's completely closed up. <laughs> so our second bottle window done and now the gothic arch is uh, the only one left and I'm excited about this. I think you're pretty excited about this too. You're gonna get some help with the design work mm -hmm. from another very talented artist so I can't wait to see you what you two come up with and how this all comes together. Almost got all of our windows done. Oh! <laughs> all right, y'all. So much work we gotta do. Stay tuned, because you don't wanna miss anything coming on up. We'll catch you guys on that next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.